This new feature by Anthropic is supposed to cut the API cost in 90%. Hello guys, I'm very excited to share with you a new feature by the Anthropic team, which is the prompt caching. This short video, I'm going to cover what is prompt caching, how you can use it in your own um, work, and a comparison between the state of API requests without prompt caching with prompt caching and also a comparison between prompt caching and using rags because it is it might be a bit confusing and I wanted to clarify everything so at the end of the video I'm going to share with you a few examples between each use cases and what are the benefits to each one of these but let's cover the blog post that was published by the Anthropic team so prompt caching enables developers to cache frequently used contexts between API calls Basically, prompt caching can be effective in situations where you want to send large amounts of prompt context once and then refer to the information in subsequent requests. So if you have a conversational agent, so you can reduce cost and latency for extended conversation, especially those with long extractions or uploaded documents. So for example, let's say you want to give, um, you want to use a book, a very long book, and you want to ask questions about the book. So instead of sending it every time without prompt caching as context, you just send it once, and then uh, the, the model knows to seek the answer in the cached prompt. And afterwards, it combines your query with the cached prompt. I will show you another example in a moment, and this will be clearer. Um, basically, like they, what they said here, large document processing, so incorporate complete long-form material, including images in your prompt without increasing response latency. It's also relevant for using tools. So you basically, you can define the tool once and then it saves the tools in the cache. And whenever you send a new query, it doesn't need to send the tool again. And in terms of latency, it seems to be working way faster this way because the context and the system message is cached and also in terms of, of pricing so the initial prompt which is cached is more expensive than just a, a normal prompt but from there on since um, a lot of big portions of the prompt are already cached it's going to be more affordable so in general it's supposed to cut the, to significantly cut the cost now the tropic team has also shared uh, detailed documentation about how you can use this in Python and also via shell. Basically, what you have to do is just add this cache control type a thermal, and this knows that it should add the whole portion above this part um, to the cached section. So let's see a few examples. So it says in this example, the entire text, so this is the you are an AI assistant tasked with analyzing the works of etc. And basically, over here we have the entire content of the book, and then we cached it. So the whole content of the book is being cached. And now, when we request to analyze major themes in the book, it's going it's going to take the whole content of the book and put it in, in place it in the cache. By the way, the, the lifetime of the cache here is only five minutes. So now whenever you're going to send another query, another question, so it's going to seek the response in the cache. You don't, it doesn't have to resend the whole conversation like it used to do. So they are saying here, in this example, the entire text of Pride and Prejudice and, and pre this is cached using the cache control parameter. This enables the use of this large text across multiple, multiple API calls without reprocessing it each time. So as I said, instead of reprocessing the whole book, the whole text, every time the portion of the book is already saved in cache. Changing only the user message allows to ask various questions about the book while utilizing the cached content, leading to faster responses and improved efficiency. Uh, here's a quick explanation of how this works. So the system checks if the prompt pre prefix is already cached from a recent query. 
he found it uses the cached version, reducing processing time and cost. Otherwise, it processes the full prompt and caches uh, the prefix for future use. So basically, uh, this is especially useful for prompts with many examples, large amounts of context or background information, repetitive, re repetitive tasks with consistent instructions, and long and multi-term conversation. Here's the cover, the pricing, which models are supported, how to structure your prompts. I don't want to go over this. Here they have a few examples. So let's see the Pythonic one. You are an AI assistant tasked with analyzing legal documents. Here's the full text of the legal agreement. So here's the full text. And this is being cached, as you can see over here. And now we are asking what are the key terms and conditions in this agreement. And basically what they are saying, this example demonstrates basic prompt caching usage, caching the full text of the legal, of the legal agreement um, while keeping the instruction uncached. So after that, every subsequent request is going to check the cache and based on the information that is in the cache already, it's going to generate an output. What else? The uh, other examples. Here's another example in which they add tools to the cache. In this example, we demonstrate caching tool definitions. And I'm not going to go over it. If you want to go over it, just read this. A few uh, FAQs. So as I said, cache lifetime is five minutes. You can add four cache breakpoints. This is a bit technical, but basically, uh, never mind. I don't think it's important for the sake of the video because I, I want to keep going and show you the explanation regarding the difference between non-cached and caching, prompt caching and, and RAG. What else here is important? You cannot manually clear, clear cache at the moment, but it's being cleared every five minutes. And I guess that pretty much it. Now I wanted to show you the difference between using caching and not using caching at all. Okay, just to nail this point, if, if you already understood this, so you can skip and check out a different video. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, wait, where was it? Let's move on. I asked it a few clarifications about stuff that I wasn't sure about. Okay, so here's an illustration. I asked it, can you show me an illustration of how does a normal conversation work without caching versus a conversation with prompt caching versus a conversation with a rag? So it says, I'd be happy to illustrate the difference between a normal conversation, one prompt with caching and one prompt using rag. I'll create a visual representation showing what happens in the first request. So I hope you guys can see this. So basically in a normal conversation, like we had until today, until the prompt caching was introduced. So you send a false request, let's say it's a, a big chunk of text, and then you add like, can you summarize this text? So the model processes the entire prompt and generates a response. It gives us a summary of the text. Now, when we ask another request, subsequent request, it still processes the entire prompt, the entire conversation, and it generates a new response. So it reads the whole text, and then it, it also reads the summary, and then it is also, it's going to respond to us. If we are using prompt caching, so the in the first request, um, it processes the, the book or the big chunk of text, it caches it, and then it generates a response. Let's say we wanted a summary, so it's going to summary, summarize the text. In subsequent requests, basically, it first of all, it pulls out the cached part, so let's say the book, and then it doesn't take the whole book, like because we have the text of the book in the conversation, in the context, it doesn't resend it because it, it is already saved in the cache. So this is why it cut, it cut cost and also the latency and it generates the new response. Now, if we have a RAG, so the first request, the uh, process 
the user query, then we retrieve relevant info from the knowledge base, then we combine the retrieved information and we generate a response. This is the first request. And in subsequent re request, we process the new user query, we retrieve new relevant information, and we combine it with the modern knowledge and we generate the new response. Now, uh, I asked it to create an analogy this analogy wasn't so good, right? Yeah, this is what the analogies that I want to share with you. So, can you give an analogy to make the difference clearer? So, this is the analogy. Let's open it side by side. So, let's imagine that we have a forgetful library librarian. So, in the normal conversation, let's say we want, uh, we are asking her about the location of the book. So, the forgetful librarian, I'm going to have issue pronouncing this so let's say clerk so imagine she doesn't know how to use tools or remember information so when we ask her for a book she searches the whole library finds the book and gives it to us that was the first request the first prompt now in subsequent request even if we ask her for the same book again she's still going to start from scratch she doesn't remember um, she's going to start searching, going through the entire library again. This is like a normal conversation, doing the whole process from A to Z. Now, with the prompt caching, the librarian does have a notepad. And in the first request, when you ask for a book, they search the library, find the book, and before giving it to you, they write down the book's location in the notepad over here. Now, in the subsequent request, if we ask her again, for the same book, she first checks the notebook in the, the notepad and sees if she has the answer in the notepad. And if she does, she goes directly to the shelf without searching the whole library again. So this, uh, this represents prompt caching. The AI routes, writes down caches important information that we told it to cache and allowing quicker access in, in similar future queries. Now, when it comes to RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation, so the computer catalog we have here, the visual representation, the computer catalog librarian finally, um, imagine a librarian with a computer containing a catalog of all books, including those in other libraries. The first request, when you ask uh, about a topic, they search the computer catalog, which quickly points uh, them to the relevant books. They then combine information from these books with their own knowledge to answer your question. In subsequent requests, for each new question, they perform a new search in the catalog, potentially finding different relevant information. This illustrates RAG, where the AI accesses a large external knowledge base for, for each query, retrieving relevant information to augment its response. Now, this is the most important part, the key differences. In a normal conversation, we always start from scratch, which is reliable but can be slow and repetitive. In the notepad, it's very efficient for repeated or similar requests, but limited to what we have written down in the notepad or we have requested in the caching. And when we have a RAG, we can handle a wide variety of questions efficiently, accessing a broad knowledge base, but this might take slightly longer than just checking a notepad for repeated queries. Then another uh, important aspect of the RAG that the RAG let's, let's can the RAG keeps on updating and I had here an example. Ta -ta -ta, where was it? Okay, so here's a comparison between both both uh, prompt caching and RAG. I'm not going to cover normal conversation because I think in most use cases we are going to use the prompt caching. So similarities. Efficiency. Both aim to make AI interactions more efficient by reducing redundant processing. Context handling. Both deal with managing large amounts of context or information. Improving responses. Both techniques can lead to more consistent and informed responses from the AI. Key differences. The, pur the purpose of prompt caching is primarily focused on, on reusing processes, processes processed Path of the prompt to save time and reduce cost, while RAG aims to enhance the AI knowledge by retrieving relevant information from an external database. The mechanism in the prompt caching 
we store and reuse process part of the prompt, like system instructions or content, context within the same uh, message, and in RAG we retrieve relevant information from an external knowledge base. The data source, prompt caching, we use, uh, we use only the information provided in the prompt, and in the RAG we access a much long, larger external database of information. In terms of flexibility, um, the prompt caching is limited to cached content from the prompt, while RAG can be dynamically uh, can dynamically retrieve different information based based on each query. So this is important, and also the RAG can potentially access up to date information if the knowledge base is regularly updated. And while the prompt caching uh, it remains static and, until explicitly changed or the cache expires, which is five minutes. Let's see what else. Okay, in practice, prompt caching is great for scenarios where you have a specific large context that you'll use repeatedly, like analyzing a particular book across multiple queries. And RAG is excellent for more open-ended scenarios where the AI might need to pull in various pieces of information from a large knowledge base to answer diverse questions. I'm not sure that I agree with this statement, but I guess this uh, analogy kind of drives home the differences. So prompt caching is like a chef that has prepared ingredients ready and has quick access to them. So let's say he cuts a lot of onions but doesn't use them, but he is limited to what he has in the kitchen and he needs manual update to change. So he needs to, if he wants to keep on preparing the dish, so he needs to manually chop down more vegetables in order to have them handy. While Arag is like a chef with a cookbook library, he has access to vast recipes and techniques. He can retrieve info. <laughs> it's funny, I'm not sure if <laughs> it's not so accurate, but it, it, it kind of drives the point, but it's not so accurate. Um, let's see. It can look up new things on demand. A library can be updated separately. Before, before uh, recording the video, it seemed seemed useful but i guess this analogy that isn't so accurate isn't so precise but still i um, i think we covered the main differences between non-caching prompt caching and rag if you're interested in uh, learning more i highly recommend that you read the documentation and start messing around with it on your own obviously as i said i don't see a reason not to use prompt caching although i'm sure that this reason will pop up but it uh, saves time and saves money so these are two resources that it's always fun to save and uh, not waste them i guess that's it for today guys i hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions or suggestions or any corrections to what i said because this concept is pretty new please leave them in the comment section below obviously if you haven't subscribed please do and until next time keep on automating